Okay, today for your viewing pleasure, we have another talking book record player for the blind. Uh, this was a 1975 model, and you know, these 1970s machines, you can date by the model number. This one's an A75, so that means 1975. Got this from a Facebook friend of mine who also collects record players. He found this in somewhere. I don't remember where he said he got it, but he said, I know you I know you like those kinds of things, so you want it, you can have it. So he sent it to me. Okay, this has speeds for 8, 16, and 33 RPM. And this type of machine is very similar to the ones I remember people having during the 80s and early 90s. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the model A72 through A76 machines were like this. The only difference were the case colors for the different model years. And in the A77 through A80 machines, on the outside they physically look like this, but the interior was a little different. The main differences were they used a plastic motor board. This is still wood, and the turntable was recessed down into the motor board, and it had plastic record guides where this one has metal guides, and the newer machines would automatically shut off when the tone arm reached the end of the record. Okay, let's give this a test and see what happens. Okay, we're producing audio, but we have a either a weak amp or a weak cartridge. Our tone control is working. And these players use the standard plug-in PowerPoint cartridge like the Caliphone and other school record players use. Okay, I'm touching the positive terminal on the cartridge connector. And we're getting a little buzz, but not nearly the buzz I think we should be getting. So I believe this amp is going to need some repair. So let's open it up and see what we've got. In order to open, in order to open these, you need a 5 16 wrench. And you just remove the four nuts on the bottom of the player, and then the whole thing will just lift off. And here's the underside of the unit. This uses a four-pole motor that's date-coded 1975, and they're nice enough to give you a schematic diagram. And this particular amp, along with the amp in the newer models, uses a single IC. And I believe the older units, the A72 through A74 models, use discrete transistors in the amplifier. And one other interesting fact is this unit uses a circuit breaker, which it's odd to see a circuit breaker used in a little solid state phonograph like this. Now, it's basically the same type of circuit breaker they used in the older tube models. Okay, let's see why this thing is weak. And we're still weak. So that eliminates the tone arm wiring and the cartridge holder. Okay, I found a problem. This 25 microfarad cap is wide open, and I believe it is a a bypass cap. Plus side connects to the IC, the negative side connects to a resistor to ground. But as you can see on the meter, wide open. And as you can hear, it's a lot louder now. Used my plans for remodeling. Okay, that sounds a lot that better, I've doesn't it? a considerable amount of time and money to have drawn up by a professional architect. How enchanting for me, therefore, to sit down and start on Knight's 8069 and have Sir Godfrey Tallboys decide to... Now, these things obviously are not going to have booming volume with a little bitty IC amplifier, but that's At the same time, nobody about as good as it's capable of sounding. Okay, the record we're listening to is a copy of Talking Book Topics from 1977. This was mailed out to patrons of the Talking Book program to make them aware of new books available as well as other announcements, and there was even an editorial feature. We'll now listen to something you might get a laugh out of. just goes to show that not everybody was 
in tune with the uh, transition from records to cassettes. Letters. Send comments and questions to Letters, Talking Book Topics, Division for the Blind and Physically Handicapped, Library of Congress, Washington, D.C., 20542. Cassette User Test. I would like to comment on the favorable response reported in the four-track cassette test. The experiment was not reliable because the cassette tapes used were all new. My experience has shown that cassette tapes do not hold up well. They deteriorate with repeated usage. I also find that cassette tapes tend to get tangled in the machine. They break, and the voice levels recorded on them are garbled. It is regrettable that any money be spent on the new four-track cassette program. Need I say more? Evelyn J. Smith, Jacksonville, Florida. DBPH replies, Your point is well taken with respect to the new tapes. It is also true that some of the participants in the test experienced the same problems you mentioned, tape tangle, breakage, and spillage. The four-track cassette test, however, gave the division valuable information. It clearly showed that a majority of the participants were able to use the four-track mode easily and effectively, and that the problems encountered were few and small. The division's decision eventually to produce all recorded books on four-track cassettes was not based solely on the user test. Other factors included the findings of an intensive study conducted by a consulting firm and the division's cumulative experience in the field. One major result of the consulting firm's study was the identification of several factors that influenced the quality of cassettes and cassette machines. Suggestions for improvements have also been polled from network librarians at a special meeting recently held at DBPH. Findings from this meeting and the consulting firm's study have been used to improve procedures for design specification and quality control. Readers should soon begin to notice the effect of these changes in cassette use. Non-users... Well, obviously I've had experience with all three formats, records, cassettes, and the new digital format, and they all have their good and bad points. Obviously, I'm kind of partial to these, this old technology, seeing as how I have so much of it. But yeah, I will say those uh, Telex C1 cassette machines were all always not the most reliable thing on the block. I think I'm on my third machine now, and probably my last machine, seeing as how the only cassettes being used are copies of older titles, nothing new is being pressed on cassette anymore, and the last items produced on records were magazines, and that phased out at the uh, end of 2000. And here's Jack a and Jill, 16 June, RPM record. Published by the Curtis Publishing Company. Copyright 1967 by the Curtis Publishing Company. Recorded in two records for the Library of Congress in the studios of the American Printing House for the Blind in 1967. For special distribution is authorized by Act of Congress under Public Law 89-522 and with the kind permission of the publishers, the Curtis Publishing Company. Notice to listeners, it is important that talking book records be kept free from grit and be kept in order. Oh. <laughs> And now here's an old 33 RPM. Page record. one of the John Milton Talking Book Magazine for October 1957. Edited by Dwight C. Smith and read by the editor and Edward J. Waterhouse and Bishop Richard Reeves with recordings of music from Ceylon and from New York City. Published quarterly by the John Milton Society, 160 Fifth Avenue, New York 10, New York. This magazine is sent free on request to any blind person with the understanding that it shall not be used for general public playing. Okay, there you go. Now eventually I want to replace this foam pad that was on the turntable. Those often were disintegrating back in the 80s when these were still in use. And I'll also do a mechanical restoration to, on the drive mechanism. But for now, that's it. Thanks for watching and more to come later.